All right, guys, welcome to the October 2021 results meeting. Uh, how did we do? What did you guys think about the month? We did that, good. You guys know what we ended up with? Almost 300 right now. Yeah, almost 200. 290,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a solid month because it is more than our average. Uh, we're averaging 278,000 for the whole year, so it is above average. Uh, it was less than September uh, because September we did 292,000. Uh, so I was a little disappointed about that. But, um, you know, another number we look at is year over year. Last year we were at 261,000. So we're at 290,000. So we're definitely going to the right direction. Um, so, um, you know, every month it's the same thing. You know, I'm happy, but I'm unsatisfied. So let's give it up for ourselves. A uh, couple of milestones we reached. Um, in December, we got to 10,000 policies. That was a big deal for us. Okay. Uh, now we're at 11,000. Okay, so we're, um, you know, growing policy count. So that's always good. 11,000 is a big number of policies we have in force, clients. And then we also uh, hit another mark, which is uh, premium. So premium is like the last 12 months, how many payments or how much payment premiums coming into our agency. Okay, so we're at 13 million now. Okay, so for a whole year, we get, you know, $13 million coming into our agency as far as new business, you know, because payments, renewals, and stuff like that. So those two factors are what kind of like, you know, agency, uh, industry-wide people look at it when it comes to how big an agency is. So we hit a couple milestones last month. So I'm really happy about those two numbers. So let's get up first. All right, so let's get into our winners here. Uh, we have the most hours worked, uh, someone in our this room right now in this meeting. Uh, at 102%, uh, let's get up for Diana. So staying consistent, I think this is uh, uh, I think this is like her second or third time this year she's won it. So this isn't her first time. So someone who stays consistent for us um, is what we really appreciate. We also have Jaylene at 101% and America at 100%. So overall, it was a good attendance month. So let's give it up for them three. But yeah. I don't know. Uh, most payments in a row, we have an, uh, a team member that's won this four months in a row now. It's going to be uh, 108 payments. The winner is America. Okay, so when you're new, it's all, always about, you know, taking payments, being here. Those, those two categories, just like when Diana first started, you were winning the payment contest, being here, you know, and then getting licensed. So i uh, really optimistic about um, people who are, you know, improving and growing here. Uh, third place finisher, we have Kalia. That's my Kalia. 41,000. Uh, she's been in the top three now for five months in a row. She's averaging 39 for the whole year. So, uh, you know, constantly hitting 40,000. That's um, a good level to be at. So very happy with her production, staying consistent. And then we have our second place finisher here. Um, outstanding month again for Jazz. Most phone calls with 1,008. That's the most anyone has ever done. Massive action there. Um, most hours on the phone um with 47 okay and then the the important what's the important like uh report that i'm checking all the time now closing ratio closing ratio exactly so she was also number one in closing ratio at 15 percent uh end of the month with 59,000. when you have a top good closing ratio like that that almost tells to me like i should be sending her more leads <laughs> so uh 59,000. um it's another great month so let's get up for jasmine Mm -hmm. And then we have our agent of the month here, uh, another monster month, 85,000 in premium, huge 15,000 in commercial premium, two life policies. Um, the life promo uh, we had also too. So combine that with her commission, that puts her at $11,000 in commission, um, plus her hourly. So it's just what she does. Let's get it off for Laura. And speaking of Laura, I want to take us back to um, a period of time for our agency here, okay? So we're going to go back to July of 2017. How long ago was that? Yeah, over four years ago. Do you guys remember anything about 2017? 2018, okay. 2017. We were in the other office, yeah. 
Yeah, in July we moved, so we were still in the old office. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, geez, I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, my kids were like two and one. It's a long time ago, right? Yeah, uh, I think it was born in July. Like that year. Oh really? Um, I remember. Oh, I remember. <laughs> okay, so it kind of gives you an idea how long yeah. it was. Um, I looked it up, and the number one song at that time was "Despacito." <laughs> <laughs> the remix. I was like, "Why are they playing Spanish songs?" Yeah, that's what they were liking it. That's what started liking. I was like, what? <laughs> "Spanish music." Um. Like we're at the old office. Okay, we did as a team seventy three thousand. Okay, we're almost at seventy three thousand right now. Okay, uh, Jasmine eight well eighteen thousand. Uh, Laura finished second place with eighteen thousand. Okay, and then both of the commissions were two thousand for the whole month. <laughs> that was good for me. <laughs> 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 no, why do I talk, mention that right now? No, because since then, it has been 50 straight months that Laura has won the Agent of the Month. So let's get up for Laura. It's looking unbelievable. Uh, I got you a little extra wood this time. Yeah. 50, 50 months in a row. Okay, August, August two thousand because July that's when that one. So August two thousand seventeen to October two thousand twenty one. I mean that's not you know I just want to just appreciate the consistency. <laughs> you know I mean just how far back that goes. You know, some were kids. Uh, what what situation our life was in? It's just totally really different. Kids. Yeah. See? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So I mean, just to put it in perspective, you know how long that go ago that was. Come here every single month, you know, and uh, and then deliver, and then you know when there's vacations or when life happens and difficult times happen, and still be here to put in work every month. I mean, the consistency. That was like my quote earlier this month, this week, where I said, you know, talent gets you noticed, but consistency is what gets you paid. So, um, you know, speaking of consistency, I just want to say one more time, thank you to Laura for 50 straight months. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's go into the present now. Uh, so what, uh, can you guys guess something that happened last month that's making me really excited about the future of our agency, you know, because some of us had this conversation, but Farmers has goals for us, and what we have to do is write more than what we did this year, next year, 2022. You know, um, we set the bar high this year, we had a killer year, and we were about to finish it really strong too with the promotion, but then we had to even write more than that. So last month, I think something happened back that's gonna help us out. Yeah. Blanca came back, okay, and I wanna talk to you guys a little bit more about that. Okay, why would you guys think I'm very excited? So yes, experience. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna write more. We're gonna write more business. Yeah, well, that's what we we need to do, right? That's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. um, experience helps, you know. It's gonna be I don't have to, tr you know, tr yeah, train. Well, sometimes just getting licensed that's you know a big hurdle. Um, but um, you know, she knows what she's doing. Uh, she's a hard worker. Uh, she's a closer. Uh, she has hit over 50,000 three times in her, three times in her career. Okay, and she's a life license too. Okay, and that's going to be something that's moving on forward. Farmer is going to put more emphasis on. So I'm really happy that she's back. Um, and I just want to, you know, say that, um, you know, even though she had to take a, you know, break for, you know, take care of her mental health, I just want to know that um, I'm here to support her. I believe in her, and I want us to all believe in her and to support her to um, make money. And to be happy here because that's what we're here to do and i just want you guys to know that you know as a businessman i just know that blanca is good for us we're better as a team with her here you know and you know i just want you guys to uh, be on the same page there because you know um we're here to make money here and you know the better team we have the better we're going to do as a team uh because you know we are um 
you know, we were a bunch of underdogs here. If you really think about it, you know, we're building a multi-million dollar company here. And when you think of those type of companies, you know, who are competing with or the, the companies that get there, they're look a little different than us. You know, they're maybe came from more fortunate backgrounds and employees in there. You know, they went to like maybe fancy schools, you know, they have degrees and, you know, individually other companies and other businesses may be a little bit more fortunate. Uh, but, you know, I mean, us, you know, we're all, you know, kids from immigrant parents, you know, and I think so all of us has finished high school, right? Well, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even care. <laughs> Uh, but we're not walking around here with degrees, maybe some AA degrees around here. Trade school. <laughs> Trade school. <laughs> some of that. Okay. I have one. Yeah. You know. Um, but I'm just saying, you know, we don't, you know, the way we are, you know, where we came from, you know, Santa Ana, Anaheim, Long Beach, like we don't, you know, we're, we're individually, we're not, but together we could compete with anybody because how well we work as a team is what separates businesses. Not how individually, how lucky or fortunate or educated somebody is. It's just about working as a team. And that's why I'm just really desperate for us to understand that, you know, we're here as a team. Let's value each other. We support each other because how well we work as a team is the only difference maker, how well we do as a business. All right. So let's welcome Blanca back again. All right. So uh, speaking of our, my YouTube channel, check out the latest episode um, and then subscribe. Uh, but there was, uh, I was interviewed and it was a really good interview, but he was like, Hey, cause he just follows me on my stories and he's like, Hey, you should do a, a day in your life. Okay. And there was a couple comments there. So yeah, this, you should, you should. <laughs> but anyways, anyways, <laughs> check, check it out. Okay. Check out the comments. They're real. It wasn't me. <laughs> okay. Be because, you know, I, I feel like, you know, my work ethic is there. Oh, let me just put them right here. So Lord, congratulations on that. Um, so I want to go back to July of 2017. I was thinking like if I did a day in a life back then for me. Okay. I think Laura will probably remember us, but 2012 to 2016, 17. Okay. I'll let you guys know how my day went. Okay. I would have a hard ass time waking up. I couldn't get up for some reason. And then I would get to the office around 10. So the 10 o'clock shift, sometimes I'll be the last person in there. I was like, this is cool. Because I was like justifying it. I remember because like, oh, there's less traffic around this time. Like, you know, blah, 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 blah. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. No? And he used to come in and close his door. Oh, yeah. He would just bring cards. I don't remember. No. Uh -huh. no when he, and then you would leave before people, too. Yeah. Well, you're saying before the 2017, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, before. No, he used to come in and he would just close his door. Oh, really? Take a nap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, he had a little couch, but yeah. like a nap. Oh, we'll take some naps. <laughs> yeah. But he would say, I'm going to be in my office. And he would just close the door. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds so weird. <laughs> and then sometimes he, we knew he was in a bad room because if you didn't say good morning, he'd get mad. <laughs> you know what? You didn't say good morning. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, emotionally, I probably was definitely more temperamental, mm -hmm. I would say, back then. Um, but then, okay, so yeah, I would go in my room and then like I would just, you know, sometimes I'd be like online shopping, you know, <laughs> you know, maybe checking out websites I shouldn't be proud of, you know. Um, <laughs> What? No, it's not what you guys are thinking. Yeah. What the heck? Anyways, um, I would, um, you know, I would take naps, okay? And every, every day I, took, I would take a lunch break. You know, sometimes with myself. Uh, just killing time almost, you know? And I would like, you know, eat chicken fingers every day, with burritos, um, uh, uh, jalapenos. Uh, jalapenos, yep. And I would, I would never go to the gym. I would, I would never go to the gym. Right, and then after work, um, what else would I do? Basketball. Yeah, I play basketball, you know, and then I come to work all hurt mm -hmm. and all angry, my joints are hurting. I would also, um, you know, after work, I'll sometimes go to the casino. Really? Yeah. yeah. On the, weekend, on the weekends, I would go to, I would, I would, you know, get high every night, you know, and the weekends, I would drink, you know, so that's kind of how I was back then. Okay. That's a little different. 
<laughs> right, so I want to talk to you guys about, about what changed. Okay, because now, now my day of my life, I don't need this alarm clock. I just wake up and just wake up automatically at 6.30 every day or sometimes earlier, right? I'll go to the gym every day. The only times I've missed the gym is, I wouldn't work on Saturdays back then too. I'll just have Sonia come in and I'll, I'll, I wouldn't even show up. Yeah, when I started working, you would come Oh, yeah, not every Saturday, but yeah, so I worked, I don't know how many Saturdays in a row, well, it was, I counted it, it was 100 Saturdays in a row before I took that vacation to San Diego, before that, so I've been working so many Saturdays, I haven't taken a day, I haven't gotten sick, I used to get sick a lot too, if I think about it, right, and I'll miss the days, and I'll just take random breaks to um, just step out of the office to get some fresh air or whatever, so I want to let you, I'll ask you guys, okay, what do you guys think changed? This is a hard question because now I exercise every day. My habits are better, right? So more motivated. I'm more motivated. Your mom, you have more responsibility. I have more responsibility. I think that's a big part to it, you know. Um, so more bills. More bills. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sacrificing a lot more. I'm working more. I, I genuinely do care more. Okay, and I just want to let you guys know this is kind of the topic of today's conversation. Is it is a word I'm looking for that I understood better than I did before. Also, I think you mature more. Yeah. Because yeah, I feel like when you get older, mm -hmm. a lot of the things you see different. Mm -hmm. Your priorities get more like, okay, I need to work if I want to do this and that. Yeah. And before, it's kind of like, eh, I'm good. I don't really need that much money. You know, like, yeah. or, I have money in my bank account. Like, you're not hungry. Yeah, yeah. I, I was satisfied. I had a little BMW and uh, I, I had, I had a 235 <laughs> silver little car. And then I had a white one first. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but then around this time was around when I had yeah, a silver one. Yeah, when I started working at the 235. Yeah. And then you had, I had two little kids, but I was living at a four, you know, renting a place that was 1,400 square feet. I thought like everything was good, but then like, they're gonna get bigger. I was like, they're gonna need more space, you know? And then um, something just, I guess, happened. I think maybe maturity, mm -hmm. but one of the things I think that has helped me is I understood um, what's the word I'm looking for. Starts with the O. Obligation? Oh, that's a good word, but it's not that. I <laughs> I, I, yeah, that is a good word. I could, uh, it's almost, it's, I understood it better. Like I valued it better. Like I was taking it for granted what I had. This opportunity. This opportunity, yeah. Okay. I, I really didn't, and then I looked up the word opportunity in the dictionary, and it says, a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. Okay, so, so it's the set of circumstances, if I think back at it, okay, one of, what, what's one of the circumstances I was born, uh, uh, that gave me this opportunity was number one, I was born. Okay, that's a set of circumstances. It kind of had to start there, right? So if I, if I valued it, that was the fact that I was born, I will work harder because I want to make the best of it because I feel lucky that I was born. Like if you guys think about it, like my my dad could have just not, kids. not been in the mood that night. If it was the next day or if it was the next hour, I wouldn't be here. Oh, you could have been a girl. Right. Yeah. Or or I could have been a tree. Like <laughs> I could have been an ant. Yeah. Okay. I got freaking lucky. The opportunity I have was that I was born. Okay. Another thing I had, um, you know, I have, you know, parents, you know, that care for me and still make confidence in me. Like my dad was a hard worker. He's an entrepreneur. Those are our, those are set of circumstances that got me to where I am today. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I don't know what that do with it, but yeah, that, 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 that is a set of circumstances that has helped me. Yeah, so upbringing. Upbringing. upbringing, okay. The fact that I was born, you know, in, in the States, you know, I grew up like idolizing Michael Jordan and then like I wanted to buy his shoes and then I got into selling sneakers and understood how like selling sneakers makes me money. And I knew that I really wanted to do sales. And then, you know, I started the agency in 2007. These are all a set of circumstances that got me here. And then once I started saying like, okay, well, what is the opportunity? Like, how big is the opportunity? I was totally underestimating it back then. I didn't get how great of an opportunity I had. 
So it took me 10 years because I opened up my agency in 2017. When I moved into the office, I was like, man, you know, I was like, well, I should probably like look into getting a bigger house for the kids, you know, things like that. Then I was like, well, I was, I, for some reason, I wasn't thinking like, well, I could make a lot more money. I didn't think of the opportunity like that. But if I really think about it, man, I could make a lot more money. And then I was thinking like, man, I could make a bigger difference in my family's life. I can make a bigger difference in my employee's life. And then I started thinking like, I have an opportunity to make a difference in my employee's family's life. So that's where the word obligation is very similar, but the opportunity, and once I fully understood it, that's when I understood like, okay, my, I gotta step on my work ethic because now I value it, now I, I'm not underestimating, now I get it. So that's what I want to talk to you guys about is how once you really understand this, and you guys have, you know, what does it have to do with you guys? I mean, you guys have the opportunity. You guys were born, you guys are sitting here, you know, and the opportunity you could make however you want out of it, but some of the opportunities could be you want to make more money. Like 10K a month, if you want to. The opportunity is here. Like sometimes people just don't see the opportunity, so that's why they don't put the work ethic behind it. Because if you're working somewhere, honestly, and then there was no opportunity, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't want to work that hard. You know, if, if you were in a situation where if I did this, this could happen and you don't see the payoff, then why would you really get into it, right? But people just underestimate the under opportunity that we have. But once you under, you know, and just understanding the opportunity makes you work harder. Okay, but if you just, you know, understand opera, that's not good enough because you do have to put in the work, a lot of work, okay? You, then, then you understand, okay, the sacrifice you gotta make, you gotta put in the work, but, it just kind of goes hand in hand because to work harder, you got to understand the opportunity. So it just kind of goes around like that for me all the time. So if I think about it, once I understood the opportunity, uh, that's when things started ha happening for me. All right. So um, I just want to give it a little, you know, moment of thought here. Okay. That you guys want to sit down. Okay. If you want to make more money, if you want to be more happier, you know, it's not just all about money. Okay. You have the opportunity to be very happy. Okay, hopefully I can pro provide that in a workplace where you have a boss that is fair, understanding, uh, cares about your well-being. You know, there's different ways that you could just look at opportunity. Right? I could make more out of the situation once you really understand the opportunity. Because, you know, looking at Laura, like, I don't know, maybe she just had a better sense of the opportunity because there's so many people that came before her, after her, that just maybe didn't get it. They underestimated it. They were ungrateful for it. You know, and that maybe that's why they didn't put in the work because they didn't see the opportunity. They didn't have the vision of what you could really do here. And then it's, again, you want to make more money, that's cool. If you want to be more happier, that's cool. Those are the two things I care about. Um, so if you really value the opportunity, that's when you'll see your work ethic go up. Um, and I really feel like now I really fully understand the opportunity we have here because it is freaking big. The opportunity to make more money here is big. Um, and while I say that, maybe I'm almost thinking like, do I really fully get it? Maybe it's bigger than even I think what it is right now. So let's not underestimate it. Okay, let's understand it. Let's value it. Let's cherish it. And that way we could all take advantage of it. All right, let's get it.